Good morning, Massive family. It's Cassandra, and I'm doing another installation of our uh, Interview a Genealogist series. And this morning, I have the absolute pleasure of having Bernice Bennett on. And if you know anything about genealogy, you know that's a big, big deal. And so I'm going to speak with her just for a few minutes about a couple of things. But Bernice, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Bernice Alexander Bennett, and I have uh, roots in South Carolina and Louisiana, and I've been engaged in genealogical research, I want to say forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was maybe destined to, to do this, but mm -hmm. I, I also have a background in public health. I worked in public health for 35 years, and when I retired, genealogy is my passion, and that's where I've spent the rest of my time. All right, and um, just so everyone knows, she's an author, she has a blog talk uh, radio show, um, and what's the name of that show? It's called Research at the National Archives and Beyond Blog Talk Radio. Excellent, and funny story, I was looking for a genealogist to help find someone and happened upon, I hired Christopher Smothers from Atlanta, Georgia. And I was doing a little bit of research on him and lo and behold, he was one of your talk show uh, persons. And so I said, who is this Bernice Bennett? Let me check her out. <laughs> and that was my introduction to you and all the great work that you do. So <laughs> thank Christopher Smothers for that one. <laughs> Oh, oh okay. wonderful. Yes, and he's so much fun. He is. He's a sweet guy, really nice guy. All right, so yeah. let's get to the questions here. Um, I started making uh, a golden series for our family, which is basically I go in and I interview some of our older family members to try and preserve some of the history. A lot of times things just get lost. And um, when I do that, some people are very excited about it and some are kind of like, no, why are you asking all these questions? But what is your take on oral history? Well, first of all, I, I want to just say, and I'm going to just want to give you a quote. And this is a Dick Gregory quote. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. A man of himself and his heritage is like a tree without roots. Mm. And so I look at oral history and going to the elders as an opportunity to share with us what's happening from the root up. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely important that we preserve the root and understand just where we came from. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so how important is it for families to gather and try to preserve that history? I know that sometimes I've seen where family members have just gotten rid of a family home, thrown everything out that was inside the family home. And I was just like, oh my God, all that history that was in that house, just anything. So how important is it for families to actually preserve the different documents or things? And this is a Nigerian quote. Mm -hmm. Not to know, not to want to know is worse, not mm -hmm. to hope is Thinkable and not to care is unforgivable. Mm. And so what you want to do is to care. You mm -hmm. want to care about the information that has been gathered by your family and not throw it away. And I've seen that. I've, I've seen people just throw away pictures. They end mm -hmm. up in a shop, but just throw away documents when somebody mm -hmm. dies. And what they're doing is they're throwing away history. Yes. And so what you want family members to do is to preserve that information as much as possible or mm -hmm. put it in the hands of somebody else that will appreciate it and can record it so that later on when you're gone, mm -hmm. that information. So you want to care. Yes. Yes. That's great. That is awesome. <laughs> and you say it was a Nigerian quote? It's a Nigerian proverb, absolutely. Okay, that is beautiful. Okay, um, what are some of the things that you find most important 
for people to actually preserve. I know one of the things I asked my father for since he kind of spearheaded all of this was to every obituary he has, keep it and be ready to send it to me when I ask for it. So I just feel like those are like some of the most important documents, but what other documents do you find is really important for preserving? I also feel important to preserve in addition to obituaries are pictures, mm. family pictures with the names on the back. How many times have you looked in a photo album and you don't know who you're looking at? Yeah. Especially those really, really old pictures. Mm -hmm. Somebody forgot to write them down. Right. <laughs> which means looking at this picture and saying, well, who is this? And right. you don't have to, to really show the picture to. Mm -hmm. I recall talking to my father's first cousin. And my question to her was, do you have any pictures of my grandmother? And my grandmother passed away in 1932. Mm -hmm. and, excuse me, 1928 at the age of 32. Okay. Which, if there were any pictures, it would be pictures of her very young. Mm -hmm. Well, my wonderful surprise, I received old pictures in the mail. Wow. And it back at a picture, it was 1908. Oh, wow. Yes. And it's something that I probably would never have received if I had not asked the question. Right. Do you have and she, you know, on the back, it said, my brother's girls. And it named them Julia, because mm -hmm. it was two. It was my grandmother and her sister, Julia and Maddie. Oh, wow. And so that's why it's so important to me mm -hmm. to tell you that you, you must preserve the old pictures. Don't throw them away because right. it's too much. Even those who are taking all of these pictures on their cell phones, mm -hmm. get pictures out of your cell phones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever you can do. Right. Else. So, yes, pictures, one thing, obituaries, another thing. To my surprise, I went into, a, it was like a, a basket, something that my mother had, and she had her school records from like 1925. Wow. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> can you imagine seeing a school record? And she, but to her, that was important. It well, I know. Too. Right. And wow. I would say preserve your school records. Mm -hmm. They think it's just not something that family members would want to have, but it does give you a look into the life of what your ancestor went to through as mm -hmm. far as school is concerned. Military records. Mm -hmm. I'm a military brat. Yeah. So to it's very important to know when did my father serve, where did he serve, what pictures he has, mm -hmm. because that's part of your, your family history, to have that. Mm -hmm. And then very much involved in the church. Mm. Find those programs where your family members were involved in the church and they had to get up and they had to tell stories and <laughs> their names are listed programs i mean that's a part of your life you know to be able to have that mm -hmm. and so you know it's a lot you can go from one document to the other mm -hmm. but that old family bible, those are great even yeah. if you the bible start one <laughs> right right start one even if the date is uh 19 right now i would say oh 2020 you can then start writing that information in the family Bible, record who's putting it in there. If you know what the sources say it, at least you're starting to put something in. You're starting okay. a tradition. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And you know, what's interesting is my mom, just off, like you said, asking, we said, do you got any old documents or anything? She goes, oh yeah, I got a bunch of love letters I wrote to your dad when he was away in the military. And we were like, oh, 
<laughs> and so, we, you know, at some point in the future, we'll be able to read those because they preserved them. And he kept all the letters that she sent him. And I thought that was absolutely beautiful. And um, so you're, you're absolutely right. The other thing with the family Bible, I'm trying to locate the slave owners for our family. And from what I understand, there are two family Bibles, but I can't get a hold of anyone. And that would help me to see, um, you know, if we can go further back, if they've got some kind of documentation in the Bible. So, because sometimes they did record the slaves, you know, births and different things. So, they're very interested in that new tradition. They're going to mm -hmm. start some new traditions. I like that a lot. All right. So what, last question, what can any person do? Huh? I'm going to say one thing that I, I want to encourage you is to take pictures of your hands, mm -hmm. the hands of the descendants. Take mm -hmm. the pictures. Oh, wow. Because once, once people are gone, they're gone. So mm -hmm. I started something with my mother, my granddaughter, my son, and my daughter that we would take our the pictures of our hands and and so what does that do why would you take pictures it's of your hands loving hands because i'll never see those hands again touching oh. me and mm. we started a tradition of taking hands and i i can recall telling my girlfriend take a picture of your hands with your mother and your grandmother and you know those people are no longer here mm -hmm. wow but to go behind that on this day we took pictures of our hands mm -hmm. and name who it's just a tradition i mean right do different right that's awesome and i am trying to start a group of traditions i'm trying i put some family values out there for our family um because we started off thinking we were all one branch and then we come to find out we're you know five branches and so to bring all of us together, I kind of want us to have some new values, you know, combined values and traditions. So I'm excited about that. So thank you for those two tips. I was going to ask you, what can a person do to contribute to, you know, preserving the history? And those are two great things. Uh, anything else? Yes, they can tell, you know, anecdotal stories hmm. or remember when stories. Okay. Because some of those traditions to disappear right and it's always to, to do uh remember when and have people go around and they can tell whatever story they need to tell but okay. there's always remember when somewhere something happened mm -hmm. that's awesome well bernice i would love to sit here and just learn everything you got in your brain <laughs> but i won't hold you too long i did want to say again happy birthday to you thank you so much for sharing your birthday today with us and thank you for coming okay. on okay all right thank you so bye -bye. much bye